All right, students, please give a warm welcome to today's speaker, Mr. Derek Pitts. Thank you, Ms. Credenza. All right, hello everyone. How are you doing today? I could not hear you. Uh, I have an inner ear problem, so we need to uh, <clears throat> we need to do that again. I said, how are you feeling today? Ooh. I assume that based on your movements that um, you said something, so I will take that as it may be. Now, uh, before we begin, I'm going to say that I am not going to be using this uh, microphone device because I do not need a microphone to form a genuine human connection with you today. So I, I will uh, put this one over here. Okay. All right. Um, so I look out into the audience today. I see a lot of beautiful young faces and a lot of beautiful old ones. Miss Credenza. Hit me up. My, uh, my pager is always open. Now, when I look into the crowd and look at your faces, I see many different things. I see a lot of potential, a lot of energy, a lot of vitality and growth and potential. But all I can think as well is a simple phrase I call, I used to be like you. I lived in a small village in the Southwest I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's called Windsor. We lived in Jackson Park in a box. Now, after my papa left, growing up was rough. It was tough and we had to deal with a lot of stuff. He left our family to go to Tajikistan to become a bocce ball champion. To make ends meet, my mama worked a job at the local Marriott Hotel for tourists and businessmen who were too cheap to go to Detroit. I used to be like you. Now, my mama was a maid. She restocked hotel mints, which she would take home for me and her meager wages of 15 cents every three days. And that was all I would eat, mints. I lost half my teeth before I was six. I had only one friend, a young boy by the name of Scotty Peterson. He dressed in rags and had only one nostril. And he was the only boy who showed me common decency for he only occasionally called me fresh breath. And I saw him one day, he had an ice cream. Now, I've never had ice cream before, so I went to the ice cream store in Little Italy. And I waited and waited to get an ice cream. And then I waited some more to pay. But I did not have any money. For what I did was I walked out. I just took it and I used my own free will to walk out down that hill. And I thought I had achieved everything I wanted, but nay. It was a false victory. The next day, I ran into some very large Italian men. They were covered in hair, their eyes filled with hate. They looked down at me and they said, young man, do you know who took that ice cream? And I panicked and I said that it was Scotty Peterson. I never saw Scotty Peterson again. I used to be like you. But then I started to get more brazen with my theft. I stole everything. I stole candy bars. I stole boots, I stole televisions, but the worst of all, I saw a motorized tie rack and I figured I have a suit, all I need is a tie and I will look successful and therefore I will be successful, but I was not successful for when I ran out of the store with that motorized tie rack, a big police car pulled up, so they threw me in the back into a very damp, humid police car and I thought, this isn't giving me a new police on life. I used to be like you. Now prison was rough. Stand up, everybody. And I was shivved a total of 28 times. Stand up for your life. I used to be like you. But then, as I slept wearily, I heard a voice that said, Mr. Pitts, you're free to go. Retail crimes only last for one week. I found a part-time job as a sales clerk, but I felt like a part-time human, a part-time good person. I did not feel worthy enough to have second shift manager on my resume. I used to be like you, but then my manager, Arthur Steves, looked at me and he said, if you believe you deserve it, you can deserve it. You have to work for it to deserve it. So I took that advice to heart. And 20 years later, I finally achieved my dream. 
I became an associate manager at Winners. And now I live in a two-ply cardboard box near the park again where I grew up and I feel so connected to my mama and my papa and my nana and my lala. When you go home today and you're looking at your YouTubes and your TikToks and you're watching that Jimmy Mr. Beast, please remember to smash the like button and you need to like and subscribe to the opportunities presented by the world around you, which is something you can read about in my new book, Unparalleling the Parallels, My Life on the Street, and other memoirs from a streetwise youth. It is available at all fine retailers and Amazon for $29. Technology is evil. Praise Jesus. Thank you. Wow, what an inspiring speech. I'll be sure to remember it for the rest of my life. And it's gone. It's gone forever. I'll never remember it again. You should know, golden boy.